So what is Windows 365? Just as Microsoft had the world on edge with the recent announcement last month of Windows 11, they've once again shocked the world on July 14th announcing this bold new technology, and I believe it's likely to change the world of computing as we know it. It's supposed to go live and be available to businesses on August 2nd, 2021. Right now, only business and enterprise options are available, but I imagine a personal consumer version for regular people like you and me will be available not too long after that. Remember that Windows 365 is designed to conceptualize for businesses. I can also see many practical solutions for the education system as well. So let's dig into it with what we know so far and then break that down into what you need to know. Now Microsoft 365 is going to be unlike anything you've ever experienced in computing. Similar to Microsoft's Office 365 and how you pay a fee each month or year to use it, now instead of using a traditional laptop or desktop computer for your everyday needs, you can now access a shared cloud-based virtual Windows session for a set fee every month. No more new PC purchases every few years. No more maintenance or repair fees. Microsoft is going to manage and maintain everything for you. Now, there was a lot of speculation about the cost of such a service. Just today, a Microsoft employee accidentally leaked that the price for this base-level virtual machine, which is a dual-core processor, 4 gigs of RAM, and 128 gigabyte of storage, will start around $30 per month. This comes out to about $360 per year. Now keep that number in the back of your head based on what you know your average computer sells for. So Windows 365 in short is basically your desktop that goes anywhere you go. You can access this virtual desktop through the cloud, which means you can use your existing desktop or laptop PC, a Chromebook, an Android or iOS tablet, an Android or iPhone, even from a Mac computer. On the surface, it seems like a pretty cool advancement. But as usual, I have a list of pros and cons for you to consider if and when you decide to jump on board with Windows 365. First, the pros. So there's no expensive hardware purchases every three or four years. If you have a decent computer with a decent internet connection, you probably have everything you need to take advantage of this technology. Additionally, there's better security. Your risk of infecting a computer drops to nearly zero when you're using a virtual machine as everything is hosted on the Microsoft server and their antivirus protections are gonna kick in to make sure that nothing happens to your data. You also have the flexibility of taking your Windows desktop experience anywhere you go. So for example, if you start something on your desktop PC and you decide to go out of town for the weekend, you could pull up something on your iPad or your laptop from a hotel room and pick up right where you left off with all the files exactly where you left them, even if you left them open when you left the house. If you need better performance from your virtual computer, you just make a couple clicks, upgrade your virtual machine, and you have it immediately. Also, you never have to worry about hardware failures or expensive repairs. Essentially, this could be the last computer you ever need to purchase, even though it's virtual and you don't actually own anything. You can run this virtual Windows 365 from any device, cell phone, tablet, Chromebook, desktop or laptop computer, even a Mac. Companies will save tons of money on IT because now they can just use dummy terminals to connect employees to their virtual machines. There's no more PC setup or maintenance, no more worries about employee theft either. Additionally, when removing an existing employee or hiring a new one, the employee can be set up to start working in just a few minutes on their virtual machine versus waiting for hours or days for the IT department to configure a computer for them to use. This is arguably better than a remote connection service like Citrix, TeamViewer, or Google Chrome Desktop, where there has to be physical machines powered on and running on both ends of the connection. With a virtual PC, that need has been completely eliminated. Any device you have that has a web browser can access it. Additionally, you'll never again have to worry about Windows updates or system crashes if you use Windows 365 from a non-PC device like a tablet or phone. If you use a computer to access your Windows 365 virtual desktop, unfortunately, you're still going to be stuck with those updates on the computer that you're using. And now the cons. There will be a monthly charge for the virtual machine from relatively inexpensive to probably very expensive, just like Office 365, where you basically rent Microsoft Office. Weigh that cost versus a single machine purchase that you have to be in front of to actually use. This actually could be a pro and less of a con, depending on how you look at it and what your individual needs are. Now you are limited to whatever hardware capability that Microsoft gives you as far as drive space, memory, and processor power. They will have different levels of performance that you can choose from, but they will cap out at a certain level. If you have a ton of storage needs, this may or may not make sense for you. Now, depending on the performance level you need, you might have to increase your internet connection speed also in order to stream Windows 365 in real time. This also needs to be factored into your monthly budget, and for some people, it's just not going to be an option. Nobody's going to pay for a Windows virtual machine instead of paying your rent or the power bill. Gamers will not benefit from this new technology, 
as they usually rely on expensive and powerful add-on components like higher power video cards to increase their gaming experience. I highly doubt Microsoft will offer anything anywhere near the realm of what a gamer will consider acceptable, and if so, surely not for a reasonable and affordable price. Now, regarding the Security Pro that I listed earlier, I also have one con about it. Not getting malware or viruses is obviously great, but when it comes to privacy, many people just don't like the idea of anyone watching what they do on their computer, and I completely understand that. In this world, we already feel like we're being watched, monitored, listened to, and spied on enough already. The people that truly fight for their personal privacy are not going to be interested in this technology because they're just not going to trust it. Now, admittedly, I initially didn't care for this new product. It's only been announced for a few days, and I immediately thought it was just another opportunity for Microsoft to suck even more money out of our pockets. But my opinion is beginning to sway. Here's an example of how one person could benefit from this. Say, for example, you're a YouTube content creator. You also have a business that you're building on the side, as well as maybe doing gig work to make ends meet. Your biggest complaint is that you don't have enough free time in the week to continue to work on your YouTube channel at home. But with Windows 365 and a laptop or iPad with internet access, you now have the ability to take that computer with you in between those gig jobs or when you have a little extra free time, but you're away from your main computer. All you need to access your virtual PC is just a web browser. That's it. Now, of course, you could also do this with a laptop and Wi-Fi, but you would constantly have to be transferring files back and forth between your PC and the laptop, which is doable, but it could be a pain. If the files are small enough, you could simply use cloud storage like Google Drive or OneDrive. But in this example, if you're a video creator, your files could be rather large, and that's not really practical. Another example is if you're an employee working from home due to the pandemic. With Windows 365, whether you're at home on your laptop, sitting outside a coffee shop with an iPad, or physically have to go into the office to complete a project, now you can do all of that with Windows 365. Everything has changed for us since 2020 with the pandemic, and Windows 365, I think, will go a long way towards allowing people to safely keep their jobs and also stay current with the people that have no choice but to go to the office to work. This new advancement from Microsoft does have some great features in my opinion, as I listed earlier. It's primarily meant for corporate environments, which is Microsoft's bread and butter. Companies small to large will benefit though because it drastically will cut IT costs and also increase employee productivity. And although it isn't really meant for your average consumer on a macro level, I can certainly see how it would benefit your average person like me in many ways. Personally, I'm looking forward to taking it for a spin, even if just for a month to see if it will let me buy back some of my time from my busy week. So these are my initial thoughts on Windows 365. What do you think? Are you more concerned about privacy and you don't like the idea of your computer being in the cloud? Or do you think you could actually find this technology useful for your daily life? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and have a discussion about it. As always, thanks so much for watching.